Hello, everyone. It's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. Uh, I thought we would take a little walk this morning through the Painters Clubhouse Door Hanger Hall of Fame. We've never done this before. I think it would be a really fun way to show you guys what door hangers we've taught over the last six years. I'm not going to show you every single one, but I'm going to show you um, a lot of ones that were like favorites over the years because we've had this membership since April of 2018. And every single month since then, we've painted at least two door hangers every month. Some months we've done three. And these door hanger tutorials, for the most part, stay exclusive to our clubhouse. So if you've only ever been watching me on Facebook, you may have never seen some of these. Um, and you're you're going to find some that maybe you're inspired by. And so even if you're a current clubhouse member, I think you're going to be like, "Ooh, where did that one come from? Is that one in the clubhouse? Because it's like a treasure trove. And, it, and sometimes there are golden nuggets at the bottom of the treasure box that you didn't know were there. And so I thought we would take a little walk through the clubhouse hall of fame and take a look at some of the older door hanger designs or in even current club, uh, door hanger designs that we've done and kind of refresh your memory on what we've painted over the years. Because once you join the Painters Clubhouse, you're going to have instant access to the entire member library. You'll be able to download the templates, the supply lists, and watch the videos for each and every single one of these door hangers that I'm about to show you. Plus, every month we're going to be teaching you new ones. And so some of these may have been taught by a guest instructor, but the majority of these were taught by me. And like I said, this isn't even all of them. This is just scratching the surface. <laughs> and so uh, we're going to get started in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Is everybody drinking their coffee and watching with me? I'm not a coffee drinker, but I do have my wild berry energy in here. I buy those. Um from Kroger. It's a drink mix with energy in it. And it's, it's like my coffee in the mornings. I'm, I'm addicted to it just as much as anybody's addicted to coffee. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this is one that we talked about just a few nights ago. Oops, I meant to put it up like this. So you could see me a little better. This one is one that we talked about just a few nights ago during one of our um, after hour Zoom calls. Somebody brought this one up as one of their favorites that we had taught. And I actually have it hanging on the wall behind me because we were discussing it. And the background of this butterfly is so cool. Uh, when we taught it, this was originally a remix. It had originally been uh, a door hanger that faded from like purple to turquoise to pink in an ombre in the background. So that tutorial is in the clubhouse as well. And it said the word hope across the middle. Uh, when we remixed it, we did an ombre of yellow, orange and pink and we did it kind of a messy ombre. So if you struggle with ombre, this is going to be your new favorite technique, I bet. For it, well, I won't say it will it won't work great for all projects, but for projects like this where it's just sort of a background, it works great. This one really looked like a hot mess before we added the black on the butterfly. Um, but once we added that black to the butterfly, it kind of tied everything in together and made it look so good. Uh, Lisa said, good morning. My energy is the grape flavor. Sometimes mixed with Diet Mountain Dew. Say what? I love Diet Mountain Dew and I love grape flavor. Is it like a grape packet you put in a Diet Mountain Dew? Or are you talking about the grape flavored Diet Mountain Dew? Because I don't think I've ever tried that. Share more. Let me know. Uh, but how many of you guys have painted this one? Is there anybody in the comments right now who has painted this butterfly design? Good morning, Wendy. Good morning, Lori. Hello, Patty. Hi, Audrey. Lisa says yes. I'm guessing you meant it was the, the mix mixed with the Diet Mountain Dew. Yeah, I'll have to try that. Hello, Lana. Uh, Dixie says, <laughs> ain't this the truth? Dixie says, it's a trust the process door hanger. <laughs> there are a few of those in the clubhouse. Uh, this one, when we painted it, I was like, guys, don't give up on me. I promise it's going to all pull together. Just keep trusting the process. And when we started putting that black on, I think they were like, Oh, it's all going to be okay. It's turning out great. <laughs> oh, crystal light packet with caffeine. I'll have to check that out. Thank you. Uh, Lori says that edge scares me. So are you talking about doing like that black outline on the edge? I actually feel like that's really easy because black covers so well. I feel like, and it doesn't have to be super precise as far as like the width of what you did it on the outside. If you've got outside the lines, you can fudge it back a little bit. I mean, I feel like this design is way more forgiving than you think. Um, so if you haven't tried it, give it a shot. 
Uh, Linda said, I've painted it, stressed me out. I find random difficult. You're not alone, Linda. There are people who used to come to my paint parties in person who would choose designs like this that on the surface looked so easy, like they or or it looked stunning. And they were like, I want to do that. But they found out that when it's a little more abstract or you have to go with the feel of it, they just couldn't do it. It's like they had to do things that were like dot to dot, color by number inside the line. So that may be you, Linda. You may struggle with abstract type stuff. And that's that's totally normal for some people. OK, let's look at another one because I've got a bunch of these. Uh, some of them have three on a page. I'm going to make this bigger so you all can see it. Uh, we did a happy 4th of July truck. That one is actually a remix. So there's two versions of that truck. The original truck, I think, was red and taught by Miss Erica Wallace from Wallace House Designs. And I remixed it. I think this was last summer and did a mint, mint green colored truck, which I really liked. Uh, the one in the middle was a new design that we taught last summer. Uh, it's called Aloha Summer. And it kind of had a little bit of an ombre background, but it had a texture to it, which was really cool. Um, and then it's got the surfboard and the flowers. The one on the far right is a USA Sunflowers and Mason jar. I feel like that is a really good one for beginners to do because it's not um, super difficult to paint. It's, you know, not a ton of colors, not a ton of details. So if you're a brand newbie to the clubhouse, you could start with that one. That's a really good one to paint next um, if you're looking for something. Uh, okay, these are two Halloween designs that were some of our favorites. We did both of these last fall. The Haunted House Globe is definitely an advanced design. The Boo Babe, not so much. That one's a little bit more on the beginner friendly side. Uh, I'll say if, if we were in like steps of like beginner, uh, which would like be like level one, level two, level three. I would say that Haunted House is closer to a three, four level. And this Boo, Boo Babe is more like level two. So she's not as low as like level one, but but just because she's got a little bit of shading in her cheeks, I think there's a little bit of shading like in the little ruffles and then the leopard print can be a little challenging for, new, for newbies. Uh, let's see. This fall mum design is one that we have taught twice in the clubhouse. I taught it years ago, probably three years ago with a, um, it was kind of like a mulberry color, like a berry colored flower. Um, and I, I still really love that one. But then I remixed it and did it with the yellowish orange flowers. And I really like how it turned out. We also changed up the color of the basket this time. Um, so that's a classic for fall for somebody who wants something that they can hang up all during fall from the beginning to the end of the fall season. That's a really good one. Uh, that happy harvest is a new one we did last fall and it was actually, um, three dimensional. So the hat and the hair were 3d and then the little bow tie and the buttons were all 3d. And I don't know if I make it bigger, if you probably can't tell in the picture, uh, but we actually used spackle with yellow paint mixed in to make texture on the hair and on the little hands. And so if you're like standing up close to the door hanger or whatnot, you would notice that it looks like straw on the hair and hands, which is really cool. So that's a fun little technique that you can learn in that tutorial. Audrey says, I love the haunted house globe. Dixie said it was very challenging. It's definitely like a level three or four. I, it has a lot of different shading and um, lots of little tiny details in that one. Uh, Lori says, I need to try it. Do you see any that you're going to try right away? Linda says, I loved doing the spackle on this one. Yeah. And you know what, Linda, when I was painting that one, that spackle was a last minute decision. It was one of those things where I was like three quarters of the way, like through the project. And I was like, you know what we should do? <laughs> Light bulb moment. I was like, I should put spackle on this and we should mix it with yellow paint. And it turned out awesome. I was so glad I did it. <laughs> Lauren says, I have a black thumb. I want to do the mum's basket and make it so it will stand up on my porch like a basket sitting there. That's what I need to do, Lauren, because I cannot keep those things watered enough. I either overwater them or they dry up and die. <laughs> I cannot keep them alive. So it's just unfair at this point for me to buy a mum. Hello, Pamela. She said a lot of different things from last week working from a job fair today. I hope it goes well. Audrey loves the scarecrow. OK, let's go to another one. This was one we taught back in February uh, this year. It's called the Brushstroke Bunny. It was a little more on the challenging side. I'll say it's probably like a level three ish if we're talking like levels one to four, you know, beginner being one, advanced being four. It was probably like a level three. Um, it had lots of like 
blended colors. So uh, while that's not that difficult to do, I do think that for beginners who are used to like color blocking things in, it is a whole other thing to like th then dip into two different colors when you're uh, doing a flower or something like that. And and also painting on top of a black background can also be challenging because if you don't have the right colors or you're not doing enough coats, it can be super frustrating. So I'll say this one's probably a level three, but I loved it. Uh, OK, so here is I wish I could show you this one up close. The letter C there is actually not a door hanger tutorial so much as it is a technique tutorial. We ended up naming this technique um, Northern Lights technique uh, because it's got like lots of deep jewel tones paired with really bright neons. And it even has a little bit of gold leaf in it. And this is another one that Linda may struggle with because it's definitely one of those you have to go with the feeling of it. And so if you struggle with that sort of thing, practice this. Maybe don't do it on a door hanger. Maybe do it in like a mixed media pad or something. Practice this technique and it will help you kind of learn to go with your intuition when doing abstract type colors and things. Um, but it's a really fun technique. And I actually made this one for Charlie to hang up on her bedroom door. But it's really beautiful. Uh, the one in the middle there is called the Daisy Gnome. We taught that one just last month in the clubhouse. Gnomes are still super hot everywhere I go. I'm seeing them in stores along with mushrooms and things. That's not really my type of decorating style, but because it's still trending, we taught uh, another gnome. I do love daisies though. So I thought that was a nice little spin on the gnome. We uh, also used a rake brush in this tutorial to kind of do like the little soft furry look of his beard and stuff. And so if you've never used a rake brush before, Go check that tutorial out. Uh, the one on the far right there is called Our Nest. We've taught this one twice in the clubhouse. The first time was taught by guest Marilyn Wilson. She was one of our Painters Clubhouse members. Uh, she was really good, still is, at making big, beautiful bows with greenery and things. I confess, making bows and using greenery is not my area of expertise. Um, but Marilyn taught this one and the original one had all the birds in like a black silhouette. So they were solid black all the way across, which was beautiful. You could put our nest at the bottom. You could put your family name, whatever you wanted to put. When we remixed it, I was like, let's add some color. So I painted each of the birds a different color and I did do a big bow in greenery and I was really proud of myself how it turned out. Um, another one we did in the clubhouse a while back. Uh, this is a little Easter bunny looking out of a window. Um, we've also got, and I don't think I have a photo of it here, a Christmas window that's got like a Christmas tree in it and like a little bird sitting on the windowsill. Um, I haven't done another window design in a long while. Maybe I should. And then uh, this other one was a Lisa Frank sort of inspired design, which is really popular with like the teenage girls right now and young girls. I, and immediately after I painted it, Charlie walked in and goes, can I have that? She loved the color. She loved the little pops of leopard print on it. And so that was a really fun. That's another like messy ombre technique, very similar to the um, butterfly back here behind me. Um you kind of like put your colors on there and then you use a palette knife to kind of just messily blend them together. And then once it's dry, we did the lettering and the leopard print and all that. If you're just now hopping on, we are doing a walk through the Painters Clubhouse Door Hanger Hall of Fame, showing all the designs, or well, not all the designs, some of my favorite designs that we painted in the clubhouse over the last six years. Um, so let me know if you see one that you're excited to try first, whether you're a new clubhouse member or maybe you've been in the clubhouse for a while and just didn't know we even had these tutorials. All these tutorials are in our member library. You can download the template, the supply list, and watch the video right there inside the member library and get started. Uh, here's another Easter design that was a remix. So this is the chocolate bunny egg. It was originally taught by Nicole Hillis, one of our clubhouse members. I remixed it this past spring and I actually did it on like a 12 inch size piece because I wanted to make it the O on my welcome porch leaner, which y'all rest in peace. The M and E at the bottom of my porch leaner have been chewed off by the new puppy. So I'm going to have to repair my porch leaner. It's looking really bad right now. Uh, that Just Peachy design, that's from about two summers ago, I think. Um, but it's really pretty. It's got little white blooms all around the peaches. I did it in a smaller size. And then I sent it to my good friend, Miss Julie Samako, who does wreath making. Does anybody follow Julie? 
and she added it to a wreath, which was really cool. So this one has a 3D option. The little white flowers are three-dimensional and the lettering was 3D, three-dimensional. Julie took it and added it to a wreath with gorgeous florals and things popping out of it. And so the wreath tutorial is in the clubhouse as well, if you're interested in that. What questions do you guys have? We'll take a pause real quick between all of our door hanger shows. Uh, Tracy said, did I understand that the clubhouse will be open until next Friday to join? Yes, we're closing the doors to the public on Friday. Um, so if you've been thinking about joining, you've only got one week left to do it. It's $47 a month. You're going to have access to our private Facebook group where the community hangs out. And I promise you, you will be so enriched by the camaraderie in this group as soon as you join. These ladies are incredible. Um, it's really nice to have this kind of support when you're trying to learn to do something new. Also, you're going to have instant access to the member library with all of these tutorials in it. I got more to show y'all in just a moment. I just thought I'd address a few questions first. Danelle says, I want to retry that Lisa Frank one. It has kicked my butt three times. <laughs> Don't give up, Danelle. I'm sure you're getting better on each one. Lana says she follows Julie. Awesome. Julie's a sweetheart. I used to be in um, Damon's Mastermind with her. And so I've gotten to know her quite a bit over the last few years. Okay. No more questions. Uh, another one we've done in the clubhouse. We've taught this one twice. The original bird had uh, in both tutorials. When I say something like that, we've taught it twice. Both tutorials are still in the clubhouse. The original was a blue bird with a like yellow, red and turquoise like um, knitted or woven like hat and scarf that matched. When we remixed it, we did a cardinal. So we changed the face shape just a little. The outside shape stayed the same, but the lines on the inside, we we changed a little bit. And then we took a writer bottle. It's real hard to tell in this picture. Let me see if I can make it bigger. We, whoop, that's not what I meant to hit. We took a writer bottle and drew the lines of the um, sweater pattern on the hat and the scarf. And then we painted over the writer bottle lines. So it left the texture behind. And then we did a little bit of a glazing medium to make that texture really pop. And then we added a little fur poof ball to the hat. So that was really fun fun one. Lauren says, I love this cardinal bird. I do too. The blue one is very striking and bold. Uh, it's very different. Um, so if you're not like into bright, bright colors, this may be more your speed. Um, here are a couple more that we do. Um, in the wintertime in December, we're always like, what should we paint next? And so and usually in December, we start painting things for New Year's or just winter in general, or we might even dive right into Valentine's. So this little love bug Valentine was one that we taught in uh, December of this year. It's got a little heart banner that goes from the top to the side of the window. It's got a really cool like shabby chic polka dot look. So we did polka dots on the bug. And then we distressed it with like a pink distress. So it's like a shabby chic polka dot um, look. So it's really cool. Uh, the one in the middle there was taught by one of our guest instructors. It says Happy New Year. And it's got polka dots and uh, gold and silver glitter on it, which is really pretty. Donna says, I love that bug. I do too. I want to change it up and maybe remix it sometime or another to make it like um, summer colors or maybe even a patriotic bug. There are so many things you could do with this shape. Uh, that one on the far right is called uh, the the llama door hanger. And we have changed that one up a couple times, I think. I think I've painted it for Christmas and I've painted it for winter. So lots of things you could do with that llama. Llamas were really popular there for a bit. I haven't seen them as much, but Charlie still loves them. She has llamas in her bedroom. Uh, another great one that we did this past winter was this mistletoe Santa design. It says ho, ho, ho. It's got a little bit of mistletoe hanging there. And of course, I put leopard print on his hat. Uh, the one in the middle there is a cactus flower pot. It's got a, a Spanish tile stencil design in the middle. So that Spanish tile is uh, a stencil we sell in our shop. And so if you um, find yourself wanting to do that one, you'll need to grab that stencil or something similar that you can use. And then on the far right there, do you remember what I was saying about the snowbird just a moment ago that we talked about right here that we did the rider bottle technique on. We also did this technique on this stocking. All of a sudden the word would not come to me. The stocking. We did the sweater pattern. And if you look closely, I, I have some close-ups right there on the right side. The This was really cool. Uh, it was kind of a, another happy accident. So we did the rider bottle with a yellow paint. 
I thought, well, we're painting over, over it. So what does it matter that it's yellow? I was like, we're going to paint over it anyway. It doesn't matter what color I use for the Ryder bottle. It just needs to have the texture. So I used yellow and then we painted over it. And then uh, we glazed over it. Or wait, maybe we, I may be out of order here. I don't remember what order we did it. But after we painted over it with red, I was like, I need a way to make this, um, this texture pop a little bit. So I got a sanding block and I sanded just a tiny bit of that red away. And the yellow started popping through and it was like this happy accident where this golden yellow came through the red and looked a little bit like, I don't know, it just reminded me of that classic red and gold Christmas look. And then we added the um, glazing medium on top and it really looked like a vintage stocking. It was just, it was so pretty. So um, that one's going to always and forever be one of my favorites. And the word Mary that we did across the top, we did with a black writer bottle. And that's a little challenging if you've never done lettering with a writer bottle. So as far as difficulty level, these three are probably a level three or higher um, if you do all the details that we did. Now, any design that I say are like level three or level four that are a little more difficult, if you're a beginner, don't let that scare you away. Challenge yourself or find a way to bring it back down to your level. If the shading is too difficult, eliminate the shading. You don't have to do the shading. If the texture is too difficult, eliminate that. If doing leopard prints too difficult, just say, I'm going to do polka dots. Or if you're not ready for stenciling yet, just, you know, paint it a solid color or add some stripes or something like that. Like bring it down to your level and meet yourself where you're at. Don't feel like you have to do it exactly like I did it in the tutorial. But I will say that if you're ready for the challenge, take the challenge because you'll learn so much when you implement some of these things. Linda says, I've always wanted to paint the llama. I think he's so cute. I do too. Charlie had that one up on her bedroom door for quite a while. Janelle says, I think I would. it would be cool to put resin on the pot. Ooh, I bet it would. Uh, and Donna said that Ryder bottle painting is amazing. It adds so much to the project. It really does. I really like using it. And so far, I've only ever used it in like winter applications to get like that sweater texture look, but I'm going to do it this, uh, probably this next month, actually, when I remix or when I teach this one two different ways in May, we're going to be teaching this summertime heart design in two different versions. We're going to do a beginner and an advanced. And I think for the advanced, I'm going to use that rider bottle to do like details and things on the flowers and the leaves, and then we'll paint over them. And then they'll have that really cool texture. So that's going to be really fun in May. Uh, Lauren said, I did the texture on the mittens this year for a welcome leaner attachment. I bet that was really cute. I, I think I remember seeing that one, Lauren. Um, this is an older design in the clubhouse. It says home for the holidays. It's a little Christmas house with a wintry background. Um, trying to remember if we used snow text on this one. I feel like we might have, but then again, maybe we didn't. I don't know. Um, and then that little heart wreath has been taught twice in the clubhouse. Uh, it was originally taught by Kristen B in the clubhouse. And then I remixed it and kind of went with a bit more of a, like a Valentine monochromatic look with just pinks and reds. And I like how it turned out then too. Dixie said the drop shadow on the ho, ho, ho made it easier. You did it differently on that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think the drop shadow looks really good. I think the postman's pulling up. Uh, let's see. On this one, we've got So Hoppy to See You. That is a design that was taught by Miss Sarah Cummings from the Redheaded Camel. She is one on my design team. She designed that door hanger. And she and I actually went live together side by side and painted this design together. And so she did hers in different colors than I did mine. And so when you're watching that tutorial, you're going to get two versions at the same time. Um, but it's really cute. It's like a little bunny leaning her head in with a little bow on her ear. Um, we had some members who changed this one up to kind of make it like uh, a girl and a boy version for double doors. So that's fun. Another fun one we painted last summer. Well, maybe it was two summers ago now. It says life is better by the pool. It's got little bathing suits hanging up on a clothesline. I love the yellow and turquoise border on this one. I feel like it really just sets it off. Hello, hello. Welcome, guys. If you love what you're seeing so far and you're ready to join the clubhouse now, all you have to do is go to paintersclubhouse.com and you can sign up right there. Um, I'm going to be live again. I'm not done yet, though. <laughs> I've got more pictures. I'm just pausing for a quick um, message. 
And then today at noon, I'm going to be interviewing another Painters Clubhouse member. So if you want to get notified when I get ready to go live, you can text alert to this number and we'll let you know when I'm going to be live. Um, I've been sending out the link to YouTube. So if you cannot find me live anywhere, come join me here on YouTube because I'm still struggling to stream to Facebook. I am taking the videos from YouTube, downloading them and putting them on Facebook, but you won't be getting me right live. You'll be getting the replay over there on Facebook later. Um, let's see. But yeah, we're closing the doors to the clubhouse next Friday. So if you've been thinking about it, if you see something you love here, take the plunge, join us, even if it's just for a month to try it out. Uh, it's $47 and you're going to really learn a lot of new techniques and find a supportive community to help you along the way. Oh, thank you guys for saying that. Somebody said, I love the clubhouse. You learned so much. We had lots of awesome testimonials to the clubhouse last night. I was screenshotting several of them. Um, Actually, I've probably got a couple of them I can read right here. I won't read you all of them. I won't hold you all on here forever doing that. But um, let's see, Lori Souza, she said, I've been following you off and on for about six years or so, and I finally decided to sign up. I'm on the West Coast, so I hardly ever saw you live, but I'm on disability now, so I'm able to see you on these lives. So some of these ladies have been following me for years and just now joined. Uh, Debbie Hefner said, I joined back in 2020 just after having surgery on my elbow. I thought I would be ready to paint soon. But seven surgeries and a left arm with limited use. I'm just getting back to crafting, but I love watching you. Um, and then Sheila Smith said, I'm at three and a half years in the clubhouse. I think this is my seventh workshop. She said, I knew how to paint already, but I was a little OCD about it being perfect. And I'm working on that, getting much better. Um, so lots of our clubhouse members have joined for, you know, everybody has their own reasons for joining. Some people feel like they need a community. Some people feel like they need painting instruction. Some people have never painted door hangers before. Maybe they've tried other crafts and they're looking for something new to try. Um, one of our ladies the other day was talking about how she used to paint on ceramics or canvas and door hangers was brand new to her. Uh, let's see. Hey, Sandy. There's Miss Sandy McTeer. Sandy, uh, you've probably had a couple ladies log in lately to your website and download that uh, color swatch sheet. And several of them have been asking me, is she going to update it with the new 2024 colors? I said, she probably will. She's just had a whirlwind of a year so far, has been traveling and busy. So she hasn't had a chance to. But there's Miss Sandy, the one I was talking about that created the color swatch sheet. Um. <laughs> Stacy said, would you ever consider doing a live with other people in your women's business group? I would love to hear what they're doing as well. Um, do you mean the mastermind that I'm a part of, like have some of them as guests in the clubhouse? Is that what you mean? Um, we have had some actually just this past fall. We had Miss Tracy Pounds from my mastermind come in and teach napkin art back last fall. We had... Um, Tracy Gibson, I was like, it's another Tracy. Tracy Gibson come in and teach us how to use the DTF transfer, uh, which is like you iron it on. And so um, we also have another one coming in June. Miss Christy Bottle will be guesting in, in June. And she teaches how to do like tiered tray designs and small crafts that she cuts on our laser. So we, ha we have lots of guests that are lined up to come in. Some of them are from the mastermind. If you're talking about my other uh, group, Miss um, the Creative Club, Miss Heidi Easley, Christy Hawkins, uh, Casey Hope, Cindy Manley, some of them, they guest throughout the year. Um, it's been a while, I think, since I had Christy Hawkins teach. Maybe it was January of last year. It, time flies by, y'all. Uh, Heidi is guesting in the group next month. Going to talk, come talk to us about paint party business. Cindy just did a guest instruction in this month in April doing resin. Um, it's been a little while since we had Casey. I go through the lineup and anytime I'm like, oh, it's been a while, I'll add them in. And so you guys will still continue to get them a little bit. But um, if you think it would be like fun or, or um informational. We could do like little interviews with them too, to kind of like hear about their business, how they've grown, kind of like tell their story. That could be kind of fun. Lori says, is the life uh, better by the pool 3D? No, it's not. It's not a 3D one. Um, it could be cute 3D though. This uh, reindeer with the glasses is 3D. Her little glasses are three-dimensional, just like my little pair of eyewear toppers. <laughs> they don't come off. I mean, you would have to like put magnets on them to be able to pop them on and off, but they're little red leopard print glasses. This was actually a remix. This one was originally taught by Candace Tiller um, from the clubhouse. And I think she did it with like pinks and turquoises and things. So I remixed it to kind of have a little bit more of like a traditional Christmas color. But the black and white polka dots kind of makes it a little more modern, especially with the leopard print, too. So that was cute. 
Here are some more we remixed. That bathing suit design was originally taught by Ashley Del Rosario from Bless Your Art Designs way back when we first started the clubhouse in 2018. So I remixed it, I think, two summers ago, and I did it with neon colors and did neon leopard print. Do you sense a pattern here? I do lots of leopard print. <laughs> I can't resist. Um, but that was a really fun one. We don't normally paint with neon paint very often because it can be pretty frustrating to work with um, because it's kind of transparent. But this design was a really fun one to do. Uh, that Happy St. Patty's Day is one of my favorite because the rainbow on it, you cannot tell in this photo. And I wish I had like a closer picture, but really it almost needs to be a video for you to truly see what this rainbow looks like on the rainbow. <coughs> Excuse me. We did foil. If you've never worked with foil before, we have a few tutorials in the clubhouse using foil. Uh, and I get my foils from Artistic Painting Studio, Jennifer Ferguson. She's been a guest in the group before. We did a holographic like sparkle foil on this rainbow. So when you like, you know, when, I, when the door hanger moves side to side or you shift your head, it looks like a holographic rainbow glitter. It's really, really pretty. Uh, Stacy says, I got one more question. Will you be doing any new 3D designs for the clubhouse this year? Yes, I'm sure we will. We haven't um, done any in the last two or three months. And I think it's just because the designs that we were teaching weren't well suited for it. You know, we taught like the um, cover, springtime covered bridge. That really wasn't suited super well for 3D unless you did the words in 3D. Um, we did the brushstroke bunny again, not well suited for 3D. Um, so it just depends on the type of design we're doing, but I will try to incorporate incorporate more 3D designs because I love those as well. Uh, the picnic basket. Sorry, hang on. <laughs> I've got a tickle in my throat. Oh, yes, Lauren. <coughs> She's reminding me that Casey Hope did the cute little pumpkin puppy last fall. I had forgotten about that one. That one is adorable. If y'all have not seen it. Uh, we did a picnic basket. That one was one of the first ones I ever taught in the clubhouse and we remixed it sometime last year or year before. So that's a new look on it. Uh, this scarecrow design was originally taught by Jessica Carpenter in the clubhouse several years ago. We remixed it. Maybe it was last. Yeah, it was last fall. The hat band that goes right across the top of the hat is 3D. The eyes and nose are 3D and we incorporated fabric. So we glued a fabric patch and then a fabric band going across, which was really fun. The Hello Winter design that you see there has a beautiful little snow leopard setting on a sled. Um, that one was really fun to paint. I really liked the, the colors and the overall feel of that one. So that one was one from last winter. Sandy said, I love the one that you sent me. Miss Sandy McTeer down here is going to be our guest in May. She's going to be teaching a design that has bumblebees incorporated. Um, and so we're excited about her coming into the clubhouse. She's never taught in the clubhouse before. So this will be the first time she's ever been a guest. We're super excited about it. These two designs, uh, let's see. The first one here is a baby truck design. We probably taught this one in January of 2021. So it's been a minute, but it's a popular design. We still sell the wood blanks of this one a lot. Great for baby showers and things like that. Um, the one on the, the far right is the Angel on the Garden Gate, taught by Miss Elizabeth Stull from Cottage Caboodle. It was her first time being a guest in our clubhouse uh, when it was back in February. She taught this really cool technique for doing faux wood grain. So that entire wood grain design in the background of that angel was hand painted, y'all. It was it's beautiful. She has, also has a very um, cool way that I didn't know about for doing like shading on the apples of the cheeks and for doing shadowing and things like that to make things look sort of like a faux 3D look and to give it some dimension. So she is really a great teacher. Donna loves that little angel. I do too. It's a really cute, um, cute design. <laughs> Elaine, our uh, Facebook page got hacked a couple of weeks ago. So if you've been having a hard time finding me on Facebook, I'm going to put my um, new Facebook URL down at the bottom so you can go and follow the new page. But we also are having tech problems because we had to set up a new Facebook page. StreamYard and Facebook are not agreeing with each other because it's a new page. Uh, so I think it's going to take some time before me to build up like a new, uh, like established following and established presence on Facebook before it will start communicating with StreamYard again. So hopefully in the next few months, things will start to get back to normal. But in the meantime, I'm live here on YouTube and I am putting these videos on Facebook after the fact. 
Okay, that is the last slide that I had to show you. Let's do a quick rewind through all of these pictures. Let me see if I can click back through these real quick. To give you guys one quick look again at all our Painters Clubhouse Door Hanger Hall of Fame. All these designs are in our member library. You have instant access to the templates, supply list, and videos for each and every one of these projects uh, as soon as you join. Not to mention we add two or three new ones every single month. Um, so if you want to come paint with us and be a part of our community, we would love to have you. You can sign up now at paintersclubhouse.com. I'm going to stick around for a couple more minutes if anybody has any questions. And then I'll be back again at 12 noon central. That's in about an hour and a half to interview another Painters Clubhouse member. We've been interviewing a new member every day of the week this week. It's been amazing to hear their stories and their hear their progress in the clubhouse and kind of how they got started painting. Oh, thank you, Sandy. She said, these are fantastic designs for any door. I appreciate you. Any other questions? <coughs> I've got a tickle in my throat this morning. <laughs> oh, I don't even think we showed this one. This is one that was from a couple springs ago, and it's a mother chick and her baby chicks playing in front of like a little fence post. And I left the banner empty so that you could put like whatever you wanted on it. You know, you could put mama's little chicks. You could put the Bennett family. You could put welcome to our coop. I, I felt like it didn't need words on the template because there are so many work, like types of phrases you could put on it. So that's one that's in the clubhouse as well. And I didn't even show you all of them today. There are even more than what we showed you. There's over a hundred different designs and growing every month inside the clubhouse. Linda said, do you know what colors you're going to use tonight? I do not. <laughs> I don't plan that far ahead as well. I have it like sketched up on Procreate, but I don't have the paint colors like chosen or anything like that. So, all right, y'all. If you missed last night's tutorial, we did the umbrella blooms design and we traced it onto a Dollar Tree round and painted it. Tonight, we're going to be doing it again. This is what the original template looks like. And we're going to be doing it on an 18 inch wood door hanger that's laser etched. So if you want to paint along with me, you can go and grab the template in our shop. It's at shopdoorhangers.com. It's called Umbrella Blooms. This video is on Facebook and on YouTube if you want to catch the replay of it over on my Southern Dormants page and my Southern Dormants face YouTube channel. Um, and I'll be live again tonight at 7 p.m. Central. Dixie says, I'm not a chicken lover, but I do love the chicken mom back there. I do too. Uh, going to paint the chicken family for your daughter-in-law to hang on her coop. That's a great idea. I like the idea of hanging door hangers on chicken coops. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys again for our Painters Clubhouse member interview in just an hour and a half. Bye, guys.